And good evening. Uh, I'm De political editor Dennis Welch, and this is Politics Unplugged. And with a little more than three weeks to go until the election, there's been a lot going on in the political world this week. So we're going to take a look at some of the major headlines and what they mean for us here in Arizona. And joining me now are Daniel Scarpinato, the former chief of staff for Governor Doug Ducey, and Democratic political consultant Tony Connie. Thanks both for being here. Now, I want to start with you, the big, big, big story this week. Debate gate, you yeah. know, uh, the <laughs> d debate debacle, I've heard it called, yes. whatever it is. Uh, Democratic nominee Katie Hobbs has refused to debate her opponent, Carrie Lake, a Republican nominee for, for, for governor on that. Um, and she's, you know, Carrie Lake has just gotten a lot of political mileage out of this story. Yeah. It, it, at first, it might seem that it's not much of a story. Now it is the story mm -hmm. in this. So let me ask you something. You, you know, uh, you've worked in media. You've worked behind the scenes for a governor. What does a debate have to do or say about anybody's ability to govern? Well, I think, Dennis, it's like I've been on Twitter this week, and there's all <laughs> these debates <laughs> happening in other states, all these gubernatorial debates, and except for here. And I'm kind of tired of being lectured by Democrats about democracy and protecting democracy <laughs> when we have no debate in Arizona between the two people who want to lead our state because the Democratic candidate won't debate. That is democracy. Well, let me, let me bring in the Democrat here. Are you going to lecture Dan about democracy and uh, debates here? I mean, what's your, what's your take on this? I mean, should Katie Hobbs have uh, just sat down and done this debate? She, she's been clear about her reasons for not doing the debate. And you've advised clients not to debate. You have, in your, in your, or at least you have the people governor, you've worked with. The you last, know, Juan Siscomani running for Congress. Yeah, the he most showed up to the debate and his opponent it, didn't in <laughs> Pinal County. He, he wanted to debate in Cochise County. She refused. So I do think debates are important, and especially in an office like this. Governor Ducey was an incumbent governor, and he debated David Garcia. And, and a lot of people wrote off David Garcia. He did two debates. I don't think she has been clear on her reasons. I think, you know, when I watched the Secretary of State's debate with Mark Fincham and the number of lies that he said, it was very difficult for even the, the uh, moderators to sort of like call these lies out. And that's the reason. The reasoning is she's nervous about giving this elevated platform to these lies in a way that wouldn't be called out. That's the, that's the decision that they've made. They're, they're sticking with it. And, you know, it's a debate on debates. I, I get it. But there are so many bigger issues that are going on in the state right now. And, you know, I, I do wish we were having more conversations about those things. But, but, Dennis, this idea that Katie Hobbs is just a sweet angel and that everything she says is completely truthful, that she's unlike any other politician ever, and that she would say nothing in a debate or a political campaign that's not completely true, I think is ridiculous. Let the candidates debate and let people judge for themselves. I mean, it's a legitimate question that has been brought up. I mean, there is a clear difference between Katie Hobbs and Carrie Lake, particularly when you start looking at elections. You know, uh, Carrie Lake still refuses to accept that there was, you know, wasn't widespread voter fraud yeah, in so, Arizona. So do we this. think the voters are so stupid that they can't make a decision about this election on their own, that we're afraid to let them see both candidates together. We're debating here. Why can't, why wouldn't we have the two people who want to run the state of Arizona debate? I think it's ridiculous and indefensible, especially from people who have been lecturing about the value of American democracy. There's a big difference between wanting to decertify an election because your candidate didn't win and saying, I don't want to go on TV to allow one of the people who wants to decertify the election to say it to a bigger audience. There's a big difference between those two. And, I understand and your point. Then it's she a fine should, point. Then Katie Hobbs should go and make the case you just did. And I think if you were the Democratic nominee for governor, you'd probably do the well, debate. I would lose there's by a 30 reason, points. But. There's a reason why she's not doing it, because her and her campaign team have decided she's incapable of answering questions. You've seen her on this show. She couldn't even a answer your questions that were not exactly hardballs about what's your housing plan. Well, I'll have to get back to you. Yeah, well, let, let, let me talk about some of the Republican reaction to this. And maybe, uh, you know, are they, to use an old phrase here, kind of, you know, they went too far. Uh, you know, jump the shark or what? And he had John Kavanaugh, Representative John Kavanaugh, uh, sending out a press release yesterday saying that he wants to now cut any funding between the state and PBS over this because, you know, PBS was working, here, a little bit of the backstory, they were working with the Clean Elections mm -hmm. Commission to put on these debates um, after Carrie, uh, Katie Hobbs had decided, 
I'm not doing the debate. Yeah. PBS decided to give her, uh, you know, 30 minutes the week after Carrie Lake was going to get her 30 minutes on on, on their airtime. So they're blaming PBS for going yeah. around somebody's back. They're c- accusations of backroom deals and whatnot. But like trying to use this to like start, you know, defund PBS. I mean, is this a political stunt that's just going too far? Well, here's what I would say, Dennis, because I've been a big defender of Ted Simons. I think he's the mm-hmm. best guy at this, which is why they should do the debate. He'd do a very fair job at this. He does a great job at these. But they stepped in it here. And for people who are involved in public affairs and media, I think this was a huge debacle for them and a big PR problem. And I do think that this whole debate on debates benefits Carrie Lake. That if they had just, if she had, Katie Hobbs had just agreed to the debate, it would have aired on Arizona PBS, which has very low ratings. Barely anybody would have watched it. And instead, the entire state and the country, including Democrats, like David Axelrod, are weighing in on this. And I think it's a disaster for her, quite and, frankly. And, and to that point, I mean, David Axelrod, the former uh, advisor to Barack Obama, said that he thinks it was a mistake uh, for, for, for Katie Hobbs not to do this debate. Um, there are some headlines. I mean, the New York Times did run a headline that says Democrats worry Katie Hobbs is stumbling in Arizona's governor race. How does Katie Hobbs flip the perception here? I mean, you're starting well, to get national headlines yeah. now. And there's, that, that's just one. Well, first I want to say Kavanaugh didn't go to his debate. So it's interesting he wants to defund debates when he didn't go to the debate or whatever. But, you know, I, when I was uh, on the Biden campaign, we heard a ton of people saying that we had the wrong strategy and we weren't going to win. It's a thing that we heard all the time from people who weren't involved in the campaign. And I, think that, it's just, I think that it's just, well, <laughs> yeah, before, before Trump canceled the second debate. So, like, it, it, I, I think that when it comes down to it, voters are voting right now. It is Katie Hobbs is is making her case to voters. When your boss won re-election, he was up by what 15 points at this point. Like he was up big, and he debated. And Twice. Katie Hobbs In is right now markets. either tied or down by one or up by one. I think that she's reaching the voters that she needs to reach, and now it's up to getting people to vote. Yeah, but instead of like talking about some of the issues she wants to be talking about, you know, Democrats want to be talking about health care. They want to be yeah. talking about the abortion stuff. They're talking about a debate. How do they get moved beyond, move beyond this? We, well, I mean, I, I think we just hope that <laughs> reporters stop talking about the debate. It's going to move on. It's going to go past. And, and uh, you know, we'll see the next thing. I mean, last night, the, you know, Carrie Lake was campaigning with Donald Trump, who just got subpoenaed by, uh, by Congress. Like, these are the kind of things that I wish we were focusing on instead. All right. We're going to have to cut it off there All right now. We're just going we're to bring you back here for a second segment. That one was a, a really an interesting one. And uh, <laughs> okay, we've great. got a whole lot more coming up here in the next segment here on Politics Unplugged. See you on the other side.